What is Project 2025? It calls for the establishment of religion by the government. Because this is the prophetically significant one. The rest of the document is unsurprising conservative principles that the Heritage Foundation and their collection of think tanks and interest groups are advocating for the next presidential administration to implement. This one with the heading Sabbath Rest got the attention of students of Bible prophecy. We got to reestablish a communal day of rest. What's going to be in this religious section is going to shock the socks of you. What is Sabbath Rest doing in this document? Why is Sabbath rest mentioned in the policies for a potential new president coming in? And if this, if this gets through, how long do you think it will be that they will be allowing exceptions to this rule for? Is what we are reading a fulfillment of Bible prophecy and the early stages of the Sunday movement taking place? Hello, this is Arthur and this is my wife, Teresa. Hello. And this is Reason Together. When I speak about Project 2025 and shed light concerning the seriousness of that, 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 that document. Over the last year, we've been watching and reading Seventh-day Adventists discussing, with some fear, Project 2025. What is Project 2025 exactly? The Heritage Foundation, a conservative think tank located in Washington, D.C., has put out a transitional guidebook if the Trump and Vance team make it into the White House in 2025. By the way, the Heritage Foundation does this every presidential election. This is nothing special. There are many other think tanks that do the same thing. The Heritage Foundation doesn't speak for all conservatives and their suggestions may or may not be acceptable to the Republican nominees if they are voted in. The presidents do not go to the Heritage Foundation for marching orders. These think tanks are really more like lobbyists trying to get the administration's attention. Project 2025 agenda evidently is a conservative response to the World Economic Forum and the United Nations 2030 agenda which I'm sure everybody's been hearing in the media. The World Economic Forum is an international think tank that is trying to bring in communism and create a one world government. If you think that's a conspiracy theory, just Google it and you'll see. It has a wonderful goal of creating equity and sustainability for the world. But the power is given to a few elites in the world and takes democracy completely out of it. People will no longer be able to have freedom, nor nations have autonomy. Therefore, a few people at the American think tank Heritage Foundation have decided that America will not adhere to anything less than national autonomy and will deal with our own problems, our own way. Thank you very much. <laughs> the American way. <laughs> That's right. That is what they state at the beginning of the Project 2025 document. And here it is, quote, this is the goal of the 2025 presidential transition project. The project will build on four pillars that will collect, collectively pave the way for an effective conservative administration, a policy agenda, personnel, training, and a 180-day playbook. What we want everyone to understand is that neither former President Trump nor vice presidential candidate Senator Vance have agreed to the agenda. The sphere attack that they're using right now, I think most Americans couldn't care less about Project 2025. Now, President Trump and Senator Vance have spoken to the Heritage Foundation about it, but they have distanced themselves from it. Also, it is almost 900 pages long. Few people will take the time to read it. But Seventh-day Adventists 
ever diligent in scouring all international information for evidence of a Sunday law, have spotted a couple paragraphs in this massive document that has sent them into apocalyptic convulsions. <laughs> Let's read it together, for it is only three paragraphs on page 589 of the document. It's under the title of Sabbath Rest. It's one, one page, and it's not the full page. <laughs> right. One page, and I'm not saying. Right. Okay, so let's let's read it. Um, I'll bring it up here, and you you want to start? I'll I'll read that part. Okay. Oh, no, I'll I'll tell you. What, I'll read the alternate view. Okay. Sabbath rest, and this is quoting directly from the document, word for word. God ordained the Sabbath as a day of rest. And until very recently, the Judeo-Christian tradition sought to honor that mandate by moral and legal regulation of work on that day. So that's the big... See, they started this document with a something that's going to really make Adventists go like that. Right. <laughs> legal! Legal regulations! That's right. That's right. Okay, on the Sabbath, so go ahead. So continue. Moreover... A shared day off makes it possible for families and communities to enjoy time off together rather than as atomized individuals and provides a healthier cadence of life for everyone. And if you'll notice, I'll point out that it's for time off to be with your family. Yeah. Do whatever you want to do. Um, it, it, it's they're not, not even talking about worship. No, it has nothing to do with worship. They're just, they're just saying... Time off to be with your family. Right. Continue. Unfortunately, that communal day of rest has eroded under the pressures of consumerism and secularism, especially for low-income workers. And that's true because, see, okay, the reason that Adventists should be okay with this is that, you know, sometimes throughout history, uh, uh, consumerism has gotten people to where they want to just earn money and earn money and, and they have to right. I mean let's let's it takes two people now to f for a household income especially if you have children mm -hmm. and so they're just saying wait a minute there's something wrong that the fact that we're all just trying to make it low-income workers are just trying to survive right. and um, right. so they're trying to allow them a day off mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so okay continue Continue. Okay, so this is the policy part. Okay. That was this. Yes. Okay. This is the policy part. Congress should encourage communal rest by amending the Fair Labor Standards Act, FLSA, to require that workers be paid time and a half for hours worked on the Sabbath. That day would default to Sunday, except for employers with a sincere religious observance of a Sabbath at a different time, such as Friday sundown to Saturday sundown, close quote, close bracket. The obligation would transfer to that period instead. Houses of worship, to the limited extent they may have FLSA covered employees, and employers legally required to operate around the clock, such as hospitals and first responders, would be exempt as would workers otherwise exempt from overtime, period, close quote. Well, I, you being a health worker, wish that you weren't exempt from this part because why should you have to, uh, when you have to work on, on your day of rest, I want you to get a time and a half. <laughs> I think we all should. Anyway, but, but okay, but notice what's in there. Absolutely nothing about requiring a day of rest, a day of worship. It's just saying time and a half. Just pay him time and a half. And this is this is why I think it's stupid because it's not going to encourage it. And here is what nobody talks about. And when you listen to all these Adventists, they just you know, focus in on this part. But this is an alternative view because there's, you know, the Heritage Foundation is very aware of the fact that there are libertarians uh, leaning uh, conservatives, and there are, you know, and so. Uh, uh, this is an alternative view to consider that's just as valid as the first one. Okay, now listen right. to this. 
If you think you're going to freak out about that one, look at their alternative view. Okay. While some conservatives believe that the government should encourage certain religious observances by making it more expensive for employers and consumers to not to partake in those observances, other conservatives believe that the government's role is to protect the free exercise of religious religion by eliminating barriers as opposed to erecting them. So they're saying the exact opposite. You know, they're going to not do stuff like that. They're just going to eliminate barriers of or any laws about it. So, whereas imposing overtime rule, okay, whereas imposing overtime rules on the Sabbath would lead to higher costs and limited access to goods and services and reduce work available on the Sabbath while also incentivizing some people through higher wages to desire to work on the Sabbath. I've run now, into a lot of those. Of in my course, work. Yeah. especially low income workers. If they're trying to help low income workers, that mm-hmm. would incentivize them. Hey, that's the one day I do want to work. Yeah, the Adventist <laughs> institution I worked at in Texas, all of them, when they got, uh, they would have uh, little incentives for weekends and nights. Yeah. Everybody tried to crowd in there, and so you could never get it because everybody wanted yeah, that. Yeah, because they gonna, got yeah, they got. That's going to create yeah. everybody wanting, yeah. wanting to be uh, working on on their Sabbath. Yeah. Okay. So the proper role of government is helping to enable individuals to practice their religion, uh, is to reduce barriers to work options and to fruitful employers, mm-hmm. and employee relations. The result ample job options that do not require her work on sabbath so that the individual individuals in roles that sometimes do require sabbath work are empowered to negotiate directly with their employer to achieve their desired schedule so they're saying you need it and this is the more this is the more uh, historic uh, um, conservative view is that you want to say we want to do everything to incentivize people to deal with their own problems and uh so anyway that's it that's the entire document and um so anything you want to comment well i just suggest everybody read it directly yeah we we read it to you now you know (laughs) but um yeah if, if you look into our we have a, a, a whole series called The Story of the Sabbath. It goes back, way back into history and comes all the way through where these, you know, they, they, a lot of people online are talking about blue laws. And if you look into to it, very few places had them. You didn't have to stay there. They didn't keep you there. You could move. Mm-hmm. You weren't forced to do anything. They may not have liked it. But if they wanted to stay in a particular area, yeah. then they were under those blue laws. But they weren't everywhere. You could move. You could right. easily get out of it. It wasn't uh, uh, like communism, yeah. you know. So remember, this has nothing to do at all with stopping people from resting on any day. Nor does it say anything about stopping worship. That's right. It does not demand rest or worship on Sunday. I yeah. hear I hear a lot. We've been watching a lot of this, yeah. and, and they keep on referring to, oh, look, George Washington got stopped because he was walking to church and he wasn't supposed to mm-hmm. in this one town. Yeah, and this was before the United States. Before the right, and, <laughs> this was and still so when it was colonies. To to look at an instant like instance like that and try to say that's an international or na- even a national, it wasn't. It was a local yeah. law. That you could get away from easily. Okay, so. A Sunday law that requires people to go to church on Sunday is extremely rare in the United States. And it only happened before the American Revolution and even in just certain states, like he just said. Most Sunday laws regulate commerce on Sunday and in no way prohibits or infringes upon Adventists or Jews from resting or worshiping on Sabbath. And even the most restrictive Sunday laws in history 
have not ever kept people from resting on the seventh day of the week. So we simply have no idea as to why Adventists are so frightened of a Sunday law. Please show us one Sunday law in, in the United States history, in U.S. history, not, not pre, uh, you know, the American Revolution, uh, Revolution, but in the U.S. Constitution, you know, once that was set up, that kept Adventists from resting on Sabbath. There's never been one. The suggestion by the Heritage Foundation was about paying people time and a half for their Sabbaths. Um, you know, if they have to work on the Sabbath, that's it. And we personally think it's a very bad idea because like it said in the contrasting conservative view, that would actually incentivize people to work on their Sabbath days. And I think what they were trying to do is make it where employers just would not work on that day. They're trying to force, it's really to try, try to enforce employers to shut down on Sunday. Right. The document clearly shows how conservatives have disagreement on the idea and that it would protect Adventists, not oppress them. I mean, think about that. It, it, it included in there those that would worship Friday night, Sunday. Yes. Clearly, it's not going to oppress Adventists. And, and we watched some people that were upset about that. Yeah, we're gonna watch. It. We're gonna have those in just that. Second, you'll but, you'll yeah. you'll see in a minute. But I mean, how can how can people not see that? Right. This this is the opposite of a Sunday law. It is we want right. to make it easier for you to rest on your Sabbath day. So here are some examples of how Adventists have been discussing it. They seemed to not have read the part of the doc, this that part that we read you. They seem to have not read the whole thing. In fact, some of them actually admit they only read half of it. Yeah. Now, I didn't read the second paragraph. So the, the fact that the main thought was you didn't read the clause. It almost feels like a defense of, well, they don't really, 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 really mean what you say they mean because they offer the clause. Trump fully supports the Heritage Foundation and that document project 2025, he has embraced it. But even more so, even more so with J.D. Vance. Let me ask you specifically about Project 2025 for our viewers so that they know. It's basically a policy blueprint for a second Trump presidency. It's supported by the Heritage Foundation and other conservative groups. The Biden campaign has said Project 25, quote, should scare every single American. It would give Trump limitless power over our daily lives. Well, Kristen, for, you asked about Project 2025, and I want to be clear here. Uh, that t Trump explicitly has said his own transition team runs the Trump transition and will run the Trump administration. Again, you have a whole host of organizations, some of which have good ideas, some of which have bad ideas. On the Project 2025 issue, what the media and the Democrats are trying to do is attach its most po unpopular elements to the Trump administration. It's a 900-page document. I guarantee yep. there are things that Trump likes and dislikes about that 900-page document, but he is the person who will determine the agenda of the next administration. All he said very explicitly is, I am in charge of the next administration because I'm the person running for president. It's just important to make that clarification. What question to Nick is, um, you're saying this doesn't necessarily favor uh, Sunday keepers. Um, it, it, it favors all people of faith or would that exclude minorities like Muslims um, or others. I mean, you're saying that it doesn't, that it's not a Sunday law per se, but it seems to me that there's a hint of clear discrimination here, uh, potentially for, I mean, what guarantee is there that they won't favor, uh, Sunday Christians versus Muslims, Jews, Adventists, Hindus, Sikhs, whatever. Um, I, I think there's no guarantee here. And I think this is broad and very dangerous. I'm just, I, it's a rhetorical question, but I throw it back at you. Well, yeah, it's a real question, but but I have read this section, and they do specifically say that there will be time and a half for work on Sunday, except for those workers that observe another day, another holy day of worship. And so for Jews and Sabbath, Saturday, Seventh-day Sabbath keepers, uh, they, they it would be time and a half for those days. So I think what, making it applicable to either Saturday or Sunday, depending on the conviction of the worker, would at least be an equal treatment, right? It's not 
uh, it's not putting Saturday. Uh, it's not putting Sunday over Saturday. It's making allowance for whatever the worker's conviction is. It's an inherent um, problem within the document itself, regardless of their wording. It just seems like um, a facade. It seems like it's not genuine. That's just the way I uh, view it. Maybe. I'm not being fair here, but I uh, maybe I'm reading too much into it. But based upon our experiences, it, it definitely doesn't favor those of minority religions, in my opinion. And Bettina Krauss says that. She states that right in her article, that that is her concern, and I agree with her. Is the opposition atheists, secularists, Marxists? Is the opposition the LGBTQ community? Help me out here. Who is the opposition? The opposition is going to represent apostate Protestantism, united with Catholicism. So hold on, you mean to tell me that there are Adventists that will begin to see things so similar to apostate Protestants that when the test comes, Adventists who have so linked themselves politically, religiously with this group who we're supposed to be witnessing to, not joining for drinks. Hey, y'all want to drink? Because that's what they're doing. That's what's happening. We went out for drinks. We are hearing and seeing that Adventists and apostate Protestantism are basically on the same page. In the manual for Project 2025, they said that the Constitution needs to make Sunday Sabbath a mandate as a moral and legal law. One more time. In Project 2025, in their manual, they said they want to make Sunday, they want to make uh, the Constitution and U.S. Congress to make Sunday a mandate of legal law. And in the article, they called Sunday the Sabbath. It says, on page 589, oddly enough, in this 900-page document, the Sabbath just happens to appear on page 589. And without getting too far into it, occultists love the number 589. 5 times 8 times 9 is 360. Have you ever seen the serpent with the tail in its mouth that makes the circle? That's what 589 refers to, is this never-ending cycle of, of death and rebirth in this occult system and it just so happens that it's on page 589 of this document just a little side note act it says that day would default to sunday except for employees employers with a sincere religious observance of sabbath at a different time for example friday sundown to saturday sundown so here they think they're getting the jews and the seventh day adventists and the seventh day baptists and seventh day church of god we're all covered under this one, but the default is Satan's sign of authority. God and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment is come. Is that hour of judgment come? Do we see all these things happening now? Do we see, do we see the beginning of Sunday law? We see a little bit of the beginning of Sunday law. Hopefully, hopefully, by God's grace, we have more time so that we can reach more people. But if this thing does happen, if this thing does happen 2025, that's it. It's over. It's over. Looked kind of obsessively at that, and <laughs> and and you know they've they've made up rumors and there's been books written that really are based on false information about Sunday laws pending in Congress and about to be um, uh, submitted. And really, it's been very quiet for the most part on the Sunday law front. There really hasn't been much talk in the religious right about this and this is significant i think because you have the leading right-wing conservative think tank that is very influential um i believe they're planning to usher in a whole lot of things including suspending the constitution so that uh, a son that's if republicans get in office which is highly likely if kamala harris wins. This is just my thought. You can take it with a grain of salt. I believe God is saying my people are not ready. Those people who are who are praying to hold the four winds, God is going to hold them because he's not going to send his people into a crisis when they're not ready. On the other hand, 
we have Trump's uh, party putting out their plan in your face. Right. If they win, God is saying, my people are ready and I'm ready to. Mercy. Mm -hmm. So you're saying that if the Republicans get in, it's going to make, how many, the Republicans get in this time with Project 2025, we think, you think it'll make it more likely that a Sunday law can come through. How many of you would say that? Okay. What do you want to say on that, Elvin? Um, I find it interesting that uh, Trump, I remember uh, I heard him make a statement. Uh, it was a, I think it was a tweet or something where he was saying he doesn't know much about the 2025 and he's not in support of it and different things of that nature. Yeah. But my thing is this, his VP pick is J.D. Vance. Right. And as Elder Bud brought out, J.D. Vance is a huge supporter and he's all in it for the uh, 20, Project 2025. Yes. So I'm like, is that statement truthful? Or First of all, Project 2025 is not affiliated with the Trump campaign. Kevin Roberts is a friend of mine, but I wouldn't say that he speaks for the president in the same way I wouldn't say that he speaks for me. And so by voting for Kamala Harris, you are supporting LGBTQ. You are supporting abortion. By voting for, the, for Trump, and you may say, well, they, they seem like they're trying to get the Bible and everything back. Well, really, this is the greater evil because we know where this is going. Right. And by voting for Trump, you're you're supporting Project 2025 and all that is in it, which includes also the National Sunday Law. Well, really, this is the greater evil. Well, really, this is the greater evil. 